Good morning, and welcome to Fantastic Family Fridays. And this morning, we are going to talk about something that is so important. And I know you've heard that before, and now you're hearing it again. Every this one's exciting. Every time. Every time. This one's exciting. This one's one that, that I get really excited about. Because we, we all are experiencing life through our bodies. And so good health is to life what you know taste buds are to the tongue. I mean, it's, it's what you experience, right? It's everything you experience in life, in, in work and education and family and, and everything you experience is kind of filtered, if you will, through your body. And what you're experiencing in health and energy levels will affect every experience in life, uh, from your relationship with your spouse, to raising children, to, to doing great work, to contributing in the world. All of that is affected by the condition of our bodies. And this is it, you get one shot. This, this is your vehicle for mortality. And so we've got to take great care of it. Well, and not just our bodies. Our bodies are a crucial part of it, of course, because it's the vehicle. But it includes our minds, our emotions, our the spiritual aspect of ourselves. There's at least four parts of ourselves that we need to be able to utilize the full energy that they have in order to live this abundant life. You know, in order to do all these things that we're talking about, to implement all these steps and these pieces into your family life so you can have a fantastic family, you have to be able to have the energy to do that. Because really, that's what it comes down to. I know for many of you, you're just like, I don't have this. What you say to yourself is, I don't have the time to do that. But really, it comes down to not energy, not managing your time, but managing your energy. Because if you can manage your, manage your energy levels in all of those aspects, then you're going to be able to produce what you need to produce. Okay? So that's what we're going to talk about. But of course, Atlas is here right now, and he wants to give us some attention. On the phone, that not work. The computer, the computer doesn't, doesn't work. work. Oh. No. Okay, go plug it in. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So all of those things that Rachel mentioned are all interconnected. You cannot separate them, nor can you neglect them. And anytime there's a void in one of them, it, you know, it's like the four tables. If we take the four aspects, it's like you know, four legs of a table, and you, you bust one of those babies off, it's coming down. And a lot of us feel like that. We're crashing, and we're like, well, what's going on? I feel drained. I can't do it. And so we suggest all these great things you can do, and you're like, not more. I can't take exactly. more. But a lot of it, like Rachel said, is we're neglecting our energy levels, and we're not managing ourselves and our bodies, our spirit, our energy, all those things combined. We're not keeping them in this proper high-performance balance. Well, right, this proper balance, because it's not just a matter of being able to go and go, 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 you've got to, there's two aspects. You need to control either overuse of your energy or underuse of your energy. Both, both sides of that can make you feel stressed out and tired and exhausted and all these things. The other thing I wanted to mention Can, is, can I pause you just yes. for a second? So the trends in society, right, are more work, more stress at work, and simultaneously a more sedentary lifestyle more ease more comfort more as a way to relax yeah just and so you've got the worst of both of those way too much stress without recovery on one side and way too much resting without enough stress on the other side it's just this killer combination that's just tanking all of us and we'll talk more about that the other thing i wanted to mention is especially as parents in the home we are the leaders of the home, and our energy levels significantly affect the mood of our home, of our children. We set that tone, okay? So that's why it's even more important that we learn to manage and effectively use and recover our energy levels because we are leading out, and our kids are seeing our example, not only for how they're going to live their own lives, but just for, the, you know, it's, it's hard to get along and have a fun time when we're tired and we're exhausted and we're ornery and we're irritable and all these negative emotions and all these, um, you know, just atrophy in our bodies and minds and spirits. When that's happening, 
it's hard to have these good experiences that we're talking about. It's hard to have these powerful, you know, mentoring moments on a daily basis and to be able to remember to do all these things that are trying to help us create these fantastic families. It's hard to do that when we just don't have the energy to do it. And so that's why this really is so important. And maybe we should have talked about it sooner, but we're not. We're talking about it now. Oh, it so, matters. Yay. Oh, it matters so much. And you know what? I've talked to a lot of parents and a lot of couples. And, and you know, we get down, we start talking. There's like, yeah, I'm, I'm just dragging. I'm just exhausted. I'm having a hard time sleeping at night. I'm dragging myself out of bed. I just don't have energy. And then kids, you know, come home with, with you know, frustrations or struggles. And I'm like, oh, how do I, how do, I do this? So this, this will make the biggest difference in your life. And if we could all operate, right, at high performance, and we're excited, we're alive, and we're going, we're giving our very best on all levels. And we don't oh. feel dead, totally dead at the end of the day. You should feel tired at the end of the day. You should feel ready to sleep. That's good. But you shouldn't feel like, uh, you know, just totally dead and drained with every emotion, every, you know, part of your body just exhausted. On a regular basis, that happening every day, that's just wearing down your body, your mind, and your spirit. And you're creating, you're set on this path that's leading to heart disease and, you know, obesity and just a breakdown in relationships because it's this constant, you know, you're mad at each other, you're irritable with each other, you're rubbing each other wrong, and that's not what we want. That's not fantastic. And, and you, you've all experienced that. When you don't feel well, it's hard to communicate well. It's hard to relate well. It's hard to get done all the tasks we have to get done as families. There's a lot to it. And so if we can feel fantastic, we'll get it. So as, as an overview, just to oversimplify this, we want stress, good stress, and we want good recovery. I mean, that's just to, on a basic level, that's how a muscle grows. We stress it, right? We really work it out, and then we let it recover. But a lot of us are, are just go, 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 go. We have tons of turmoil, and, and we're stressed out, and we're worried too much, and, and there's no recovery. And then others get no stress, and so there's this atrophy, like Rachel was saying. So we're going to go through each of these. The physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. They all matter. So the first aspect we want to discuss is physical because, again, your physical body is the vehicle for everything you do. And so even if you don't have work or you don't do things that you think are physically demanding, you still are using your body, which is physical. And so it's important that you manage your body, manage that energy, and also recover that energy on a regular daily basis because that is going to help you to be able to do all the things that you want to do. And so there's, there's a couple different aspects specifically that help you in maintaining high energy levels physically. And the so first you're walking thing, around just like, yeah, life is good. You're walking around like, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing is, of course, eating food, okay? We all know what is healthy food and what is not healthy. For the most part. I mean, you could say, okay, this Twinkie definitely is not healthy and this banana is. People know that basic level of what's healthy and what's not. Eating the proper foods in the proper amounts and at the proper times is going to give you the energy that you might be lacking. That might be the ingredient for you. Maybe in your life there's, and, and what we're talking about is there's things that you can do that you can change in the way you manage energy that are going to make a huge difference. And so as we go through this, you need to look, well, wait, maybe that's what I need to change. And maybe it's several things. But changing those, making those small changes is going to really increase the amount of energy you have. And it's going to make a big difference in how you feel throughout the entire day. Uh, across, across the board. Across the, board. the research, the studies, the case studies, everything shows that your body affects all those other areas. So you may be impatient, you may be irritable, you may be stressed out, scared, and a lot of that may be directly tied to what you're eating and when you're eating and how you're eating. I mean, if, if, our, if the fuel we're putting in our bodies is just tanking us and we're going around and, and we're looking around, everybody's eating like that and we just say, well, this is the way it is, and you've always felt like that, you gotta make some changes and wow, I mean, dra drastic 
improvement in, in all those areas of your life. So making small changes is going to make a big difference. So let's go into the specifics of the types of food and when we should be eating that can make a huge difference in the amount of energy as far as physically, which again are then going to affect the rest of our, you know, the rest of our emotions and spirit and all that. So specifically, um, breakfast, that's a great place to start because we go to bed, we sleep all night, hopefully we sleep all night and we get up in the morning and we might not feel hungry. Personally, I feel hungry. I'm hungry when I wake up in the morning. So it's great. Some people don't feel hungry and they think, oh, I don't need to eat breakfast. But eating breakfast is very crucial because your body has been fasting. That's why it's called break fast. And so you need to fuel your body and you need to fuel it with the right stuff because we don't we don't want something that's gonna we're gonna you know use up really fast and then crash. We want something that's going to sustain us and give us energy to get through the morning. Which this necessarily isn't a big, heavy, greasy meal because that will actually drag you down. An hour later, you're just going to be hurting. you got to get the right kind of fuel in your body so it gives you energy until the next food break. And some people think, you know, like an example is a bagel and some orange juice. They think, oh, that's a great breakfast. But really, those are, those are things that burn up fast. They give you a quick energy burst but then they crash you and so you're not you don't have sustained energy um, you know into the day and so what are some specific things you can eat well let's talk about what you don't eat first <laughs> that's, that's good and, and you really don't I mean you know, one of the points was uh, in, the, in this great book we're reading and, and across the board the, the science the research it's all there it's not really that you have to make a drop in calories, just what you're eating. So try to cut out, I really challenge you to do this and, and try as hard as you can. Try to cut out white flour and, and white sugar and, and greasy foods. You know, and, and there's some label stuff, they call it low fat, but it's so chock full of sugar, it can actually be worse for you. Well, that's, a, that's almost a whole that's other so video, a whole other right. topic on this whole this whole delusion that we've been taught about processed foods and low fat and sugar free and all these things, which in reality, all of those types of products that are processed and have those claims, they're actually making us fatter and more addicted and causing all these health, problem, health problems because we need to focus on eating whole foods, okay? Not something that's- That's masquerading as food. They, injected all these vitamins and minerals and things, that doesn't help our bodies. Our bodies can't process those foods correctly and give us what we need, give us the nutrients we need. We need whole foods. A whole food is a banana. A banana is a whole food. It hasn't been separated. You don't take out the calcium, you don't take out the potassium, you don't take out the nutrients that are in there and make it into something different. It comes whole and complete with a whole bunch of nutrients that are in the right proportions, working together to give you what you need in that. And, then and can, bananas have been classified as a happy food because they have serotonin in them. And, and I mean, you just you eat these bananas, we eat tons of bananas, and you get that in your body, and you just start feeling good, and you get these whole foods in there, and, and, and it, you feel so much better, it's noticeable. So that's a, you know, that's a great measuring stick, I guess, is to eat as many whole foods as you can, because they, again, they're whole, they have complete nutrients, and then if you can, one good, um, or I don't know, whatever. Another thing you can do is to get different colors. So you're getting oranges and greens and purples and reds and getting different colors in your diet, the whole foods, fruits and vegetables, is giving you different nutrients. They all have a different mix of nutrients that your body needs. It provides fuel. And so you want to get whole foods and you want to get lots of colors. That's a good Measuring stick again. Yeah, um, well, it's just a great what principle. To eat throughout the day. Really try to eat a lot less processed foods. I mean, a lot less. That <laughs> means cutting out the typical American microwave meal well, wow. no, of cold cereal. Yeah. That really is not, that's no good. You're sending your kids off to school or whatever with a bowl of cold cereal. That's a totally processed food that's just 
giving them this, you know, energy burst and then crash. Which is a sugar, it's a sugar, sugar high. Yeah. So you're having a sugar reaction and then a crash. And what's on the nutritional label, it, it's really a lie. And, and there's tons of information out there that's a whole other day. Yeah. But <laughs> look for natural foods. Try to eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Uh, grains. Grains, lots of grains and nuts. Get, get nuts throughout the day. I mean, we're kind of moving into throughout the day. Uh, let's do that. I mean, get get a good, healthy breakfast that's going to sustain you. But the so science. Like I, I, let's, a couple examples that people probably want that. Oatmeal. That would be a good one. Especially, you know, whole oats would be better. We still eat quick oats, but. A healthy know, granola. The same granola, thing. Granola. Especially if you make it at home. We love to make homemade granola. Um, we know a lot of people, you know, they're either into the raw or the vegetarian or the vegan. And again, that's great, that's awesome. We personally do more of a whole food and real food type thing. So for that, for us that includes milk and eggs and things like that. And especially if we can get them right from the chicken or raw milk, which we've been able to do here in Costa Rica. Where else do you get the eggs from? <laughs> Sorry. Just right from here locally. We chicken. try to get everything the locally. Is right there. We try to get local milk, we do. And, and there's the thing about dairy, and just do your homework. Everyone has to decide. I guess our encouragement here is just become educated, become conscious. Say, why Why am I putting this in my body? Is it really good for me? Is it and if, fueling me, giving me that energy I need? And if it's not, have the discipline to say, it's out of the house. And that's the best way to eat better. Get it out of your house. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's in your house, in your cupboards, if you're bringing it home in the grocery cart, yeah, it's, there's trouble. So keep it out of your house. You'll that eat better. That's just often too hard to resist, you know, when you have it there. So you just have to. And so the research also shows that our bodies need kind of some refueling every 90 to 120 minutes. So this is another thing that, you know, trumps a lot of the traditional thinking that we have of, oh, three meals a day, and we eat at breakfast time, lunch time, and dinner time. The studies are showing that that's not really necessarily the best way to go, and that's hard for a lot of people, but there was this research done on a group of people, and they were placed, you know, in a room or a building where they didn't have time, they didn't know what time it was. They might have known day and night, but they didn't know, you know, what time it was. And they said, just eat when you're hungry, there's food available, eat when you're hungry, and typically, on average, they ate every 96 minutes. And it wasn't this huge meal, you know, you're not sitting down and having this big three course meal. You're just eating small amounts throughout the day, every 90 to 120 minutes or so. And it's just continuing to fuel you so that you're not going and you're like, oh, I'm hungry. Well, wait till lunchtime, and then you and get so to lunchtime and you're deplete, crashing. Yeah, exactly, because you deplete, you deplete yourself. Your energy. Yeah. And so you're continuing that energy, you're giving it your body what it needs on a regular, consistent basis, and keeping your energy levels up by just, you know, maybe it's a handful of nuts or some trail mix or an energy bar. You're just eating enough that it's not, that you're not, you know, reaching that crashing point and you're not getting full, you're not overstuffing yourself. Throughout the day, you're just going and keeping up those energy levels. It's that can make a huge difference in your energy levels. Seriously, it can. And it's, so it's just, I mean, it just it makes sense. I mean, your body's using up energy, and so it needs a little bit of refueling. You, you, most of your energy expenditure is going to be during the day when you're working. And yet, for a lot of Americans particularly, we have a huge dinner. And right as we're going into the time where we have the lowest energy expenditure, which is in the bed, and so we have all this leftover food that's often just turning into fat. And so you know, it'll be a smaller meal before bed, and and a, and a bigger breakfast and a, and a bigger lunch. But, but we're, we're doing these habits, and a lot of us are totally dehydrated. Most people are really dehydrated. You've got to rehydrate first thing in the morning. That'll get your metabolism going and keep it going throughout the day. Drink tons of water. And you've heard this before, but actually do it. I mean, it's, it's common sense, but not common practice. Hydrate your bodies. Eat you know five or six healthy meals. Cut out the crap. And seriously, I promise you're going to start feeling changes right away. Some of you might have some headaches and struggles coming off of, uh, you know, the carbonation and the caffeine addictions and, sugar. and the sugar. And it's going to be hard. But again, the science is there. The research is there. The studies are there. You're actually hurting yourself by pounding all that caffeine. In, in the, some, some people are just living on coffee in the morning and not having breakfast. 
or the caffeine drinks, and they're stopping three or four or five times in the day hitting this caffeine, and it's just messing with your body, and then you can't sleep at night, and it's the same thing again. You're eating junk food, and so you're really just hurting yourself. And how can we be awesome at home as a family and, and doing our work if we're just dragging ourselves through the day of fighting our bodies? So, so take those principles, you know, adjust and, your schedule, and get some exercise in, and you're going to feel so much better. And I would say, you know, of course you're going to be like, well, how do I implement this? How do I remember? Just start by making it a habit. I would, you know, maybe you set an alarm on your iPhone or something, and it reminds you every 90 minutes or 120 minutes to have a little snack. And then prepare... You know, go shopping and get those things. Get some trail mix without the M&Ms, you know, or get the, get whatever, something that's going to give you that fuel you need. And buy it for the whole week. Right. Take it with you and in your briefcase and your desk or and at home. And just set the, set the reminder and say, oh, okay, let's just have a little snack. Or again, listen to your body, okay? Again, with the eating part, um, our bodies go through these natural cycles of, work and then rest and we don't listen to that and I guess that are we going to talk about that in a little more detail so we'll do that now okay your bodies naturally go through these cycles these oscillations and we don't listen to it but we need to be able to listen we need to listen to that so that we can expend energy and then recover and then expend en energy and then recover when we do that we're able to have energy for longer amounts of time and have more stress, you know, deal with it better because there's going to be recovery. That's just like how athletes work. They'll go, 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 but then they stop and they recover. And we don't do that in our lives. We, we'll just keep going and going and going and never stop and recover. And so that's when we have the meltdowns and the breakdowns and that's when we get frustrated and upset. All these negative emotions, that's where it's coming from. And so when you feel hungry, you know, or you're starting to get a little tired or foggy in your brain, that's a perfect reminder to, hey, I need a little snack as an energy boost. I need a little rest, a break. And it can be something as simple as you pick up a book or you take a little walk around or you try you know, some you yoga spend, yeah, or just distract your mind. Just take 10 to 15 minutes to just... Get distracted for a little bit, do a little stretching, do something, you know, that becomes a part of your ritual that helps you do that recovery of your mind and your body. And that also can make a big difference. I and mean, this all fits together, even with the stop. And a lot of people use a 50-10. The work goes straight after it hard for 50 minutes and take a 10-minute break, then back for 50. And you can do that with your children. When you're working on a project, when you're in your studies, you dig in, study, study, okay, 10 minute break, we're gonna stretch, we're gonna try a couple of fun things, we're gonna get a snack, okay, we're back at it. Uh, our, we have a friend that was just recently in Kenya. He was in Kenya in a, in a running camp. These are the fastest runners in the world. They hold the world records, they just clean up. And he says what they do is they go out and they run hard and fast and far, but then they rest. He says they are just incredible resters. Yeah, I wrote about it on, well, he wrote about it, and I put it on my blog, and he said that's probably one of the the keys to why they're so successful. The whole village will support them, and, you know, runners that they think they have, that have promise, they'll support them so they don't have to do anything else. They don't have chores, they don't have work, they don't have anything except running and resting. Running and resting, that's it. But he's like, that's what, that's what he noticed was one of the big things that he saw them doing is either they were doing that, they were running or they were resting and that was it. And so we can take that and learn from it in our own lives. Work when you're working and then rest and then get back to work. Instead of just trying this work, 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 work until we drop, let's work hard, give our best effort and whatever, again, whatever it is, if it's at home, if it's your mom, your, your homeschooling, if it's uh, getting an education, if it's study, whatever it is, go after it, give it all you got, and then recover. And, and that, again, that applies uh, mentally and emotionally as well. Let's move into that. Well, okay. let's finish, finish with physical and the other aspect, aspect I'm sure you will want to talk about, your favorite, is exercise. Yes, 
I thought eating I was remind, my favorite. Well, okay. <laughs> eating and exercise. Okay, yeah. We we got it. We got to exercise, and it needs to combine both training your muscles and your heart and your lungs. So it's cardiovascular exercise, running, jumping rope, swimming, jumping on trampoline is awesome. Uh, riding your bike, just getting your heart going. And try to do this three to five times a week for a minimum of 30 minutes. Well, I mean, get your heart rate up and get going, get exercising. I, I, I mean, I just want to say, you know, it's not rocket science. We all know that exercise is good for us, and yet none of us do it. I'm very guilty of that. But you just have to get this mindset. You have to get this vision of why you're doing it. You know, why, why are you doing it? You're trying to fuel your body. You're trying to have more energy. And it seems counterintuitive to us that, oh, well, I have to exert all this energy. To get more. To get more. But it's, it works. Yeah. I mean, what's, um, what's his name? Richard Branson? His yeah. Favorite. So they, this guy is a multi-billionaire. has all these Virgin businesses. I mean, he's Airlines just and created Virgin everything. And, all that. and they asked him, you know, oh, how do you get so much done? What what can I do to get more What's done? What's one thing more? I could do to get more done, you know, to accomplish all sorts of things? And what was it? His said? response was exercise. Because it gives you energy. It gives you clarity. I mean, it gives you emotional energy, mental energy. Exercise is so powerful. It just connects everything and literally, when you're dragging through the day, you don't need a nap necessarily. More often than not, you need water and exercise. And it will invigorate you and get you going. When I come back from my runs in the morning, I'm ready to roll. I mean, it just it gets you going. So, so get that exercise. Get that cardiovascular and, exercise. And, you know, we all say, well, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time to exercise. We don't have enough time to eat well. You just, if you want, again, like I said before, it's not about time management, it's about energy management. And so if you want to get more done, if you want to have more time, then you need to manage your energy. And so you need to instill these habits of energy management, which is what we're talking about. Isn't this so exciting? Exercise, oh, it's good. I mean, well, I love listening here. Giving time to exercise will actually give you more time in your day. You'll be more productive. You'll be high energy. You'll be on your A game. This high performance stuff here, and it's important. Uh, just a quick note about muscle development. Use your muscles. Get them going. Make sure you're flexible. Do some yoga, uh, some calisthenics, some yoga. plyometrics. Right? Just been doing yoga every morning. I mean, get use your body. There's so many people have back aches and hip pain and knees. It's because their their muscles are not being used. They're sitting all day or using the same. I mean, just get some core strengthening. Just use your body. Get out and use those muscles. If exercise is hard for you, find something fun that you just love to do that gets used in your body. But we've got to use them. If we don't use them, we lose them. And you've seen it. You've seen it around older people that just, they can't move. They can't touch their toes. They can't, I mean, it just it really lowers quality of life. Like we said in the beginning, your whole life experience is going to be affected by the condition of your vehicle. We've got to take better care and of it. And which all comes down to what you do on a daily basis. The daily habits. So start today. Get okay. some exercise and eat better. Okay, next. Next, we're going to go mental, emotional. Love it. Oh, this is so good. Uh, the mind, the spirit, the emotions are exactly the same. All the principles we just talked about apply the same way. We need more stress, and I know it sounds counterintuitive, more stress combined with better recovery. We've got to exercise our emotions and then let them recover. So we get stronger, we have better patience, we have better emotional control. A lot of us are just emotionally out of control and we think we're victims. And so somebody does something and we just fly off the handle reacting and oh, we can't handle even the little disturbances. Which can are related to the physical aspects. So again, getting some of those habits in place of energy and recovery and eating and exercise can help us with our emotions. But then there's more to it. And they absolutely correlate. And so now we want to develop ourselves emotionally. We have to, right? I mean, in the home, right? We're we're constantly a bunch of people living in a confined space together. 
mean, there's going to be friction. You just got lots of little things moving against each other. And then little kids are like, they're in my space. They're touching me. Rah. But we need to, especially as parents and leaders in our homes, we have to have we phenomenal emotional control and mastery. It's essential. And we've got to exercise our emotions so that we control and direct them. Not that we become numb. We don't feel anything. We should feel, feel more. Our, our emotions should be sensitive and strong, but controlled and bridled, right? Able to handle uh, stress factors. I mean, when something happens, how do you handle it? And a lot of people fall apart right in front of you, right? Or even little things, uh, little annoyances. You know, I often say that only small people are bothered by small things. And, and if we're underdeveloped emotionally, we get all worked up, bent out of shape, and we end up fighting over how we cook mashed potatoes. Right? Doesn't matter. So exercise your emotions. And, and even challenge yourself. Uh, one of the things we like to do, and Rachel and I like to do this, we like to push our comfort zones. And, you know, if we're uncomfortable talking to someone or practicing Spanish or doing something that makes us uncomfortable, dancing last night, I mean, I'm just... <laughs> Did right? some dancing. Did some dancing, and, I, and I'm, I'm a comfortable dancer, so I'm pushing myself, right? We push those boundaries, and what it causes us to do is grow emotionally, right? And it's, it, it, it raises confidence and competence, and just you become such a better person, right? And, and then you have emotional energy to handle, handle all the demands, okay? Now, mental, I mean, these all fit together. A lot of us just have weak minds. We haven't learned to think. Thinking is one of the hardest what? things in the world. That was kind of rude. We have weak minds. <laughs> it's true. Because we don't we don't think. We just go through. I mean, it's been said that we have, like, what, 60,000 thoughts a day. But most of them are the same thoughts we had the day before. So whether it's a song going through your head or what am I going to eat for breakfast or... Yeah, it's all yeah, transactional. It's all what's happening instead of like thinking. I mean, we don't, again, another, going back to the root of energy drain, one of the reasons we lack energy sometimes is because, or a lot of times, we lack purpose. We lack vision. We don't have this big thing in front of us of why am I doing these things, you know? Having that, I, it seriously does. I mean, Trust us, we know having vision gives you energy. It gives you meaning to your life, and it gives you a reason to do the things that you do. And that and perspective, so, if you've got a powerful perspective, then the daily task and the activity and everything you're doing now they fits. Have a reason. There's a reason for it. What I was trying to say is that we have to spend time thinking, thinking, you know, and thinking about our big picture. We don't do that. Because we're going through the motions, we're going through the transactions, we're speaking with our spouse transactionally about you know, we've got to pick up the kids and you have to do this and you have to do that, and we don't take the time to like stop and think about our life. The great what, ideas. The great ideas and what's important to us and what we value and what we're going after and what our goals are. And so we lose that and we lose energy because we don't have that bigger force. And we don't exercise our mind. The mind is a muscle. And so a lot of us so are suffering mind. from seriously mean? mental atrophy. I mean, what is your mind feeding on? Just like your body, we went through the whole thing. What are you fueling your mind with? Most people are fueling their mind with garbage. Negative news. I mean, just radio. stop watching the news. Just, you know, the radio and just blah, 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 mindless TV. words. Yeah, all this TV, all this junk, you know, cele what are celebrities doing, ah, whatever. And if people are reading, they're usually, you know, just reading for entertainment, which is fine. That's a way of recovering. But again, if you do that too much, then you're not, you're not exercising your mind as a muscle. You're just relaxing it all the time. And so there's no growth. And I mean, I don't know, have you been there? We have been there where... You're, you're introduced to new ideas and new thoughts and you literally like feel your mind expanding and it's so exciting and you're just on fire and you just want to go after it and like do something and it's such an incredible experience. You need to have that and the way you have it if you haven't and the way to continue having it if you have is introducing yourself to great ideas 
and thinking about great ideas and talking about great ideas and just expanding your mind. It's awesome. It's, it's one of the greatest experiences in life. And few people really do it on a consistent basis. And it takes effort. It really is. I mean, it's, it's mental effort. It's like a hard workout mentally, but it's so invigorating and so exciting. And so introduce and yourself energizing. to and energizing. And so if you're, if you're mentally alert, you're mentally energized and alive, you're going to go after your tasks now. You're going to go after your obstacles or challenges. You're going to go out when a problem comes in. You're like, okay, how can I get this? How can I wrap my mind around? How can we understand it? How can we make this better? And it's, it's just this fascinating and, and fulfilling experience. But you've got to challenge and exercise your mind on a daily basis. And we do that, we already told you that, as part of our morning routine, we're exercising our minds every day. It's critical. By reading, obviously, is one of the biggest ways to do that. So. And do it with your conversations, too. Here's my challenge for you to, to this week. Every day, take your conversations to another level. Ask deeper questions. Uh, let's talk about things that really matter. You refuse. For, you start today. For the rest of your life, <laughs> never again talk about the weather. Who cares? Hey, who cares? Talk about a great idea. Talk about how you're going to become a better person, how you're going to make a, a contribution in the world. I mean, talk about what you're going after. Really read hard books, right? The, the best classics. And then discuss them. Discuss them as a, as a couple. And discuss them with your children. When you get together with your neighbors or friends, say, what are you, what are you guys doing? What's your vision? What's your goal? What, what's your purpose? Take it to the next level and see what happens. You can you give me some just blank get... stares and go, what, what, what is wrong with you? Have you been listening to the Dennings? I mean, what's going on, right? I mean, but, but challenge yourself mentally. Okay, so now, now we have our bodies are improving. They're feeling better. Our emotional mastery is getting stronger. We're able to control and direct our emotions. We're feeling deeper love and deeper happiness and joy. We cry when we need to cry. We laugh when we need to laugh. We have this full range of wonderful emotions in life. Mentally, our minds are being exercised and, and filled and fulfilled, and they're being challenged, and they're growing and recovering, right? You read something hard, and then you think about it, and then you, you read a great book that's just maybe more entertaining. Um, and you can do that both. You know, reading, there, there are great classics that will both challenge you and entertain you. That's the best book, because you can't put it down, but it's not just easy read, it's really challenging your mind. And the last is spiritual. We are spiritual beings. We have a spirit inside of us and that spirit needs to be exercised, it needs to be used. A lot of people maybe have a, a great physical body and a totally emaciated spiritual body, and <laughs> so to speak, you know? We've got to have each of those four elements or We'll have an energy drain, an outlet, a leak somewhere where we're just dragging along. Which again, the spiritual aspect of ourselves comes down to our values. What do we, what do we believe? What do we hold to be sacred and special? Because that's going to direct our life. If we value family, if we think that family is important, that's a spiritual side of ourselves, and we need to nurture that, and we need to live according to that. If we say that, yeah, family is important, and then we live differently by neglecting our family and not nurturing those relationships and not spending time with our spouse and our children, we're not being true to our spiritual selves, and it's draining on our energy levels in all other aspects as well. And so you have to be aware of this spiritual side, and you need to nurture it. And, you know, that can look that can look many different ways. That can be according to what your personal beliefs are. But recognize it, identify it for yourself, and then develop it. Spend time developing it. You know, uh, stress it. You know, put effort on it, and then recovery. Effort and recovery. Most of us struggle, you know, across the board. Whatever, whatever your religious beliefs are, across the board, most of us struggle because we don't have quiet time, and we can't get quiet inside and just feel the spirit. Um, we get we have so much turmoil, so much noise all the time. Go, go, go. And we don't have time to quiet down. So I challenge you, again, all of this is fitting back into our daily routines and our rituals. Spend time with God. Spend time with meditating, yourself. praying, just get in quiet. You know, tap into heaven's power and nurture 
your spirit, right? You have a spirit inside your body. Nurture it. Take care of it. Exercise it, right? Exercise faith and, and that the quietness. Just get this inner peace. I mean, it's hard to... It's hard to Energy. verbalize this. <laughs> Whatever you do, Kung Fu Panda. just uh, tap into it, exercise your spirit, give it recovery, exercise spiritual muscles so that now you're strong across the board. Okay? I know we've just so, given you a ton. I mean, you're yeah. drinking from a you fire hose. I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you. I'm giving you, you lots of challenges challenge. because you got to grow and then recover. Again. Like we talked about in our previous video on the big picture, this is part of that big picture. You're helping, you're helping yourself create this big picture, and then what do you do? You take it and you plug in the puzzle pieces. These are the puzzle, these are more puzzle pieces that are going to help you in accomplishing your big picture. These are the puzzle pieces that are the fuel, though. I mean, they're critical because they are fueling the entire. Thing, your, your entire life. They're, in fuel, they're fueling you, and you in turn are helping to fuel your family by setting that example and showing and teaching how to do this and how to raise the energy levels. Because having higher energy levels, really, that's what makes a fantastic That's what it's family. all about. I mean, you feel, you, we all ought to wake up and go through the day feeling awake, energized, and alive. Happy and positive, you know, feeling positive emotions instead of negative emotions, and feeling energized physically instead of drained. And you handle whatever comes your way. I mean, and, and a lot comes as in a family. Be able to handle that, over overcome your obstacles, outgrow them, outmaneuver them, just to be alive. I mean, so many people tell us they feel like they're in a walking a coma, a coma, coma, and. <laughs> And, and they feel dead, right? They, they've just been going for years and years doing the same thing, and they're just dragging along, just merely existing. You don't, have to lay, you don't have to live like that. But you can't skip what we're talking about here. This is the fuel. If, if you don't do this, if you don't like put fuel in your tank... You're not putting gas in your car. No. You're not going on a trip. You're not, going, you're not going very far on that trip, at least. So do this, okay? And this is exciting stuff. We all ought to have energy more than the Energizer Bunny. I mean, we ought to just be going, right? More energy than your kids. Yes. You can have more energy than your children. I know it's hard to believe because they never stop. But you can do it. You can keep up with them. The problem is we're just not doing all the things we've just been talking about. So, so go after this week, okay? I know it may seem like a lot. You can break these down into little daily habits. Little things, you just you set them up once, and then you just keep doing them. And I promise you're going to see huge changes. So start today. Don't get overwhelmed. Get excited about this, because you're about to have way more energy than you ever had. It's going to be awesome. But start this week. Remember, real focus, critical focus, your body, your mind, your emotions, and your spirit. Energize and recover. Energize and recover. Reach upward and have a fantastic week.